This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. We are glad to have you with us this morning. Historic gains for the state's GOP in the Arkansas legislature where there are 64 Republicans in the House compared to 36 Democrats in the next session. In the Senate, there will be, for now, 23 Republicans and 11 Democrats. I'm joined by the man who will officially be the Senate president in the next session, and he's the Senate president already in the 89th General Assembly, the current General yes, Assembly, too. Jonathan Dismang, thank you for yes, being sir. with us. No, I appreciate the appreciate opportunity. You. And congratulations on your well, thank resounding you. victories on Friday. Yes, so sir. it's good. Um, let's talk about what it's going to be a little different up at the state capitol. It is. Not going to have a Democratic governor, going to have a Republican governor, going to have not just majorities, but I would argue super majorities in both chambers. How's that going to play? Well, I mean, one thing you have to keep in mind, we are not budget-proof majorities on the Republican side, and so that does require us to compromise, I mean, and, and that will occur. I mean, and even beyond that, you know, in particular in the Senate, I mean, there's a lot of camaraderie that occurs between all of members, regardless of party. And kind of what we've talked about today on the floor a couple of times is, you know, by the time we gavel out, we'll have a lot of very close friends and in a way we'll almost be a family. And, and I don't expect that to change in any way. Uh, of course, I'm excited to have Asa as governor. Uh, you know, I've always had a good, I wouldn't say always, but for the most part, had a good relationship with Governor BB. But, uh, you know, I've known Asa for quite some time and really look forward to the opportunity to working with him. Who's going to drive the legislative agenda? Are the legislative leaders going to drive the legislative agenda or is Governor Hutchinson going to drive the legis legislative agenda? Well, I mean, I think obviously you'd see more cooperation or, or coordination maybe between, you know, the executive branch, the legislative branch. Uh, you know, I'm sure that we'll have members that will feel very strongly about the particular agenda and, and we'll see that emerge. But, uh, you know, as for me, you know, I don't have agenda on any particular issue except for making sure that we're successful. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can do that is make sure that the members are su su successful. So, uh, but as far as specific agenda, I think it'll be a, a joint effort between the, you know, two branches. Let's talk about what some of the key issues will be in this upcoming legislative session. Obviously, tax cuts are on mm -hmm. Asa Hutchinson's agenda. Right. The private option is going to be a, a big issue. There could be issues such as tort reform, education issues. What do you see right. really driving the session's business? Well, I mean, so far you've got all the above. I mean, I think you'll see some tweaks to the lottery as it stands right now, and that's probably both on the uh, management side um, and just how it's organized. Uh, I'm not sure how severe that or, or much of a difference that'll be there, but, you know, and really the, in on the scholarship side also, uh, that'll be something that will be, you know, you know, pretty well discussed, I would imagine. Uh, I think that, you know, because of the tax cut commitments that are there, uh, I think the legislative body would like to honor those uh, for the governor, and that'll be a, a priority for us. Um, you know, and I think it'll be, you know, that's going to require some changes mm -hmm. in the way we do things right now. Uh, you know, obviously some of the biggest places that we could influence would be in the Medicaid uh, program. So, you know, we've got, uh, I, th I think, some places that we can use scaffolds and some places that we need to do some overhauls. Uh, some axes, maybe, would right. be how they describe that. Uh, so let's talk about the 800-pound gorilla, the elephant right. in the room here, no pun intended, with GOP gains here. But the private option is sure. going to be big. How does it... How, can you see a vision for it in its current form? Can you see a vision for the changes that need to occur to garner legislative support? I mean, really, I think that we're just at a point that we have so many new members, and, and this is a pretty complex subject. I know that you know maybe the up or down, yes or no, uh, it was what's typically out you know in, in a conversation, but but really it is complex. There, it, it will impact a lot of different things, and so right now I think it's just too early to to really say what direction those members, especially those new members, would like so to take. So your approach is going to be what? what? How are you going to try to present it to uh, the new members in a way that right. allows them to kind of view it in a, uh, an empirical way? Right. Well, I mean, there, there are facts that are related to the private option, and that's in regards to how it impacts our budget. That's in regards to how the program works. That's in regards to and, and really what happens on the federal level if you do something or you don't do something. Um, and, and like I said, I'm not sure that you know, all that information is out there, but, you know, we, we want anyone that wants to take any information to be able to have it, have it readily available, and, and, and that's, that's really where the discussion will start. You're a chief architect of the private option. You obviously, I would think, want to see it succeed. Sure. Um, are you going to be okay if it doesn't get the votes passed to continue? Well, I mean, you have a number of members that have uh, made commitments, um, you know, already in regards to private option, and I wouldn't ask them to do something different than that. Uh, I think that what it's going to require and, and something I would be supportive of is additional changes 
uh, making sure that it is as conservative a model as we can. What we want to have is the best Medicaid program in the country. Uh, and that's what we're going to strive for and that's what we'll push for. And, and, and really, you know, at this point, I think it's too early to say what that looks like. All right, but you'll be back to talk about it more. I'm betting we will. All right, Senator All right, Jonathan Dismang, thank you very much.